Hello everyone and welcome to part two of this week's episode of um, Lawrence Won't Shut Up About the Brand New Space Elevator. Because I realised just as I was finishing off the uh, the last video, for the, the one that you saw yesterday, that there was one other thing I hadn't mentioned about the space elevator that's really quite important. Um, and actually now it's just occurred to me there's another minor thing that I've not mentioned that's a bit less important. So, the space elevator not only is capable of sending trains up and down, which we've not done yet but we've had, we've had some ideas about, but also you can use it to transfer power. So if I click on this thing here, I can I can choose whether I'm transferring electricity down or up through the uh, through the space elevator. Um, and the wonderful thing about this is that um, generating power up in in space from with solar panels is significantly more effective than generating it down on the ground. So as you can see, we're generating 3.7 megawatts per uh, per solar panel up here. Now I think that's because I've cheated and turned the brightness up to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see, and it should actually be about half of that. But even so, that's still far more than we're generating on one of those we'll generate on Norvis. So if we have a look at this here. Interestingly, the space elevator is only is only taking. Oh, I know why. Right. So the space elevator here is capable of taking in a certain. It is capable of taking in power. At the moment, it's only taking in ten megawatts. If we go down to Norvis, uh, and then have a look at the power system down here, we'll find out why. And that's because at the moment, basically all of the power is being produced by the solar panels because it's day, and we do still have massive areas of solar panels down here. Now these are being slowly pulled up and sent up into Norbit. And also, we are slowly decommissioning the, uh, the these free power systems because these we reckon are absolutely horrible for our UPS. And if we can get rid of those, then we think the game is going to run much more quickly and, and generally more nicely. And so over here, you can see a lot of the. If you look at these 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 systems down here versus these ones up here, you can see that a lot of the greenhouses have been removed. Um, and the idea is that we're going to uh, perhaps that we're going to try and churn through some of this wood rather than just have all the bots pick it up and put it into the uh, into the uh, logistics network. Or maybe we'll just go sod that and try and rip the whole lot up and just not care and have an enormous amount of wood that we don't know what to do with. So if I force it to be middle of the night, there we go, it's now nice and dark. If I click, so the solar panels have suddenly stopped producing any power. Um, now, <laughs> when I'm when I'm recording videos, normally I, I turn always day on because it makes the it makes the videos not look nicer, and I'm not sort of trying to peer around blearily with a torch like this. And because I don't save afterwards, it doesn't matter. It's not cheating. Uh, so that's why the solar panel. That's why you've gone you've gone day night day night day night day night day. But now I've just kicked it over to night. So here you can see this the uh, the solar panel power has dropped off. And instead, we now have um, 140. Uh, we have now we have four gigawatts coming down the cable from the uh, from from the space station. So we're now able to we're now powering the um, the the systems on Norvis almost entirely from space. Now actually, dawn is breaking again. Uh, let's let's do that again, and then nip back up to Norbit. And if we look at the power power graphs up here. You can see that we're now pulling four and a half gigawatts, 4.6 gigawatts into the into the uh, from the solar panels, and 3.9 gigawatts of that is going into the is going into the space elevator to be taken down to Norvis to power everything down there. And this is out of our maximum power production of probably actually eight eight and a half gigawatts, not 16 point not not 16 and a bit, um, because as I said, cheating up here as well. Um, but this means we'll be able to produce electricity in a much more UPS efficient way and just hopefully and keep Norvis running without that massive drain uh, on on UPS from running all of the free power systems. And so this is going to be this is going to be a massive massive improvement. And this is something that Mark's been handling. We we've, we've got this plugged in now and he's been so he's been ripping up big chunks of the um of of the, of the free power. We've seen tens of thousands of bots sweeping majestically across the landscape and bogging the UPS down even further, but it'll all be worth it in the long run, I'm sure. <laughs> and as you can see, we now have oodles and oodles of power generation up here in Norbit. And it's just one simple connection down this massive fat cable all the way down to the ground and that can just keep everything powered and it's, it's, it's just great. The other thing I was going to touch on is that you do, um, as, as mentioned, you do these elevators do get through um, a certain amount of cable. As you can see up, up here, it's four, it's four per minute plus a certain a, a small amount per stack for anything goes up and a, an even smaller amount per stack of things that go down. We did do the maths on this, and um, Tr Tristan phrased it quite nicely as this is as um, a train, an empty train going up is about a quarter of a second's worth extra. Um, a full train going up is about five seconds worth of extra cable. So the amount of ooh, so you used, it used load there because a minute had passed. So a train going, a train travelling up the elevator is worth costs about five seconds worth of time of, of normal of normal upkeep, as as in. 
As in, you'd have if you sent a train every five seconds, it would double the cost of running the elevator. Now, we're not going to have that many going through, so I think the ele the cost of running the elevator is going to be massively dominated by this uh, four per minute thing. The amount of sending trains, the amount, the, the cost for sending trains up and down is basically insignificant. If we just assume this is five per minute, then we can we don't need to worry about it at, at all. The cost of transporting goods is insignificant. So we've got this um, box over here that has a chunk of, um, of this cable in that's apparently currently being brought over by logistics bots, which is a bit gross. In the future, once we've got things, things set, uh, set up a little bit more properly, we shall start producing the cable down on Norvis and putting it just putting it into the in, into the elevator from down down there, which will be a little bit cleaner, I think. We're also if, if we also then if we also decide we want to put elevators on other planets, we're going to have to develop a system of transporting the elevator cable out to those other planets in fairly significant quantities, uh, but that can just be get going to the spaceships because the spaceships will be heading back empty. And I did something fairly similar in my 0.5 run. Uh, we're taking out things like um, meteor defense ammunition and, and, and various, and, and oh, and iron and sulfur to the places that needed um, sulfuric acid for, uh, for, um, for mining. So you could, so the nice thing about spaceships is that they travel in both directions, so you can have them take it, take out resources that are required on the outpost on, on one way, and then bringing back the resources that are mined on the outpost when they're going the other way. Rockets can't do that. Delivery cannons can't do that. Trains can as well, and that's why yesterday I was talking about putting all of the junk from space and also some of the resources that will be shipped to space into the into trains when they're going back down, uh, just to just to take just to, to make the most of the trains that are heading down there again. So now let's get on to um, all the other things that are going on up here. So they, because um, <laughs> everyone else has been busy as well, and yesterday I mostly talked about what I'd been up to. So um, we had a problem. Yes, we had a problem previously with the one of these science packs. Uh, this one, are you are you production or utility? You are production science because that requires vulcanite, and for some reason, a an inserter got turned around, stopping the supply of vulcanite coming over from Tashikuten to uh, to the bus. And apparently, that's the only place where it was being brought over from. Uh, Mark fixed that, so now we have this again. And that means we are now able to start to carry on producing the uh, production science, except that we've run out of iron ingots, which is awkward. Um, but in theory, we are able to start producing production science again, and those will be then passed around here. But because of the uh, the the, the, the sh it had been stopped for quite a long time, we didn't have very much of it over here. So this train has well, it's filled up to about yay much, and it had done this before as well. And so Tristan came over and gave it a nudge, sent it sent it over there manually to go to science drop because over in the science area we were having uh, problems because we'd run out, yeah, as you see, we've run out of production science packs here. And that was causing the research to stop, even though we had quite a lot of all of the more exotic science packs available, which is a, a bit of a shame, and not how things are supposed to go. So, um, yes, we, he, he, gave it, he gave it a boot, like I, like I did just then. Here it comes. And then it was able to come over and un unload like that, and there you can see the production science pack pouring out. So we'll be able to carry on doing a little bit of science. So... I'm not sure why we're so short on iron ingots, but I'm cautiously optimistic that next time the uh, delivery rocket comes up, it'll bring a load with it and everything will be hunky-dory again. In fact, you know what, let's have a quick look. Here's the delivery rocket, and no, it doesn't seem to have a rocket full of iron ingots in it. That's interesting. Looking into this, I see a signal of minus 100 iron ingots coming down the, uh, coming down the communication system from, uh, from Norbit, so that's correct. So that should mean that up here we would be requesting iron ingots. The problem is I don't entirely understand how Tristan's system works here. We have, ah, we don't have a train of iron ingots here. So one of these trains should be, yes, this is the iron ingot train. It's trying to go to iron ingot picker. Have we got a shortage of iron? Have we run out of iron? Any old iron? Here we go. Here's the iron smeltery. Here's the iron ingot. Oh, there is a train sitting here not going off to um, drop those ingots off and therefore the other train isn't capable of coming in. That's unfortunate. This this train needs a, a temporary stop to go into to, to, uh, to allow the, the train from the rocket area to come over here to grab them. Now this is only going to be a problem for a rel in the relatively short term because uh, once we switch over to using the train, the, the new um, space train system down here, then we will have the, uh, presumably we'll have an area down here where, where all those ingots are dropped off. So that, that will fix the problem. But it's a kind of I'd rather it was fixed a bit more 
properly. Than, I'd rather it was working now, and that's 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 a bit unfortunate. Anyway, so that's why we're not making any production science at the moment. So it's, it's good to know, good to, good to follow these things back and find out where the problem is. So back to Norbit. I was trying to talk about what Mark had been had been up to, but I, I, I kept getting distracted by distracted by other things. I'm sorry, Mark. <laughs> so he'd fix he'd fix the um the that that science that over there. Uh, he's then also gone through and done a load of tinkering and fixing of the of the biological sciences. So we we had some issues before where uh, some of the contaminated cosmic water wasn't been taken away here. So now this this pipe is completely empty because it's all been well basically basically empty because it's all been drained down here into this system and then turned back into clean cosmic water and pumped out into the there's presumably a very large tank somewhere on on the on this pipe to to hold to hold the excess of it. Yeah, down here we go down here. So it's been dumped, dumped into these tanks. So now. The, uh, the rest of his system is able to use that as and when it needs it. Great. Oh, he fixed, he fixed the iron train. I complained about him stealing last time, so thank you for that. Uh, ironically, it was then pointed out that I'd also stolen a train because I hadn't finished a, li a, rail, a rail line off either. But, um, yeah, the, the, these things happen. <laughs> it's an easy mistake to make. Uh, he's fixed the genetic data. He hasn't said how he's fixed it, but it is now, it is now geneticizing, so that's nice. Uh, there was plasma problems. There was orange and green. Oh, there was an orange and green mixing. So he probably got two machines close, too close together, and they and they were and it was it was a bit it was a bit upset. So then I've been spaced out a bit more, and everything is fine again. Uh, and of course, he made the wide area beacons that I mentioned yesterday. So up here, uh, what else? What else has been going on? Well, Mike has been adding refueling to. He says to some of his stations. So yeah, along here, <laughs> he's. Half. Oh no, no, no! I'll take it back. He's yes. He's he, along all the way along here. He's got he's got now these belts coming across that can re, re, reload the um, the batteries into the trains. Now, he's 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 only he's only sort of. Oh no! That's, yeah, but this one is only half done. This one is emptying the duff batteries out onto the belts, but this one doesn't appear to be. So the plastic train is going to eventually fill up with dead batteries potentially. Um, but in theory, he's gone along here and he, he's he's put in put in new batteries and taking out taking out the old ones. Um, actually, that said, no, he's not taking out the old batteries from the, the train at locomotives at this end of the train. So he he's gone in and half a job to the um, the, the, the swapping the batteries over. So um, fifty percent well done, I suppose. Uh, just needs just needs the other fifty percent now. Uh, also fixing fixing of various um, various minor bugs up here, and he's observed that the uh, the material science is now limited by the number of uh, blank data cards coming in, which was limited by the red circuits until um, until Mark went in and, and uh, fixed that up in the, in the last stream. It looks like it's probably it looks like it's okay now, so I think that has now been caught up with. In fact, and the fact that none of this is running makes me think that maybe we've uh, maybe not. What's going on up here? Why? Why? Is, why? Is the, okay, this. So let's have a look. This is stopped because this this one is empty, and this is empty because. Ah, oh, yes. There's too much scrap. So we, yeah, I noticed there was there was a bit of an ex excess of scrap on the. Uh, I think. Yes. Yes. An ex excess of scrap. It's not being. It's not able to get rid of it down here because this is completely full, and that was because of the heavy oil that I noticed last time. We're going to have a look at. In fact, let's have a look at that now because that's why. That's why material science isn't working. So yes, over here in the recycling area, the scrap has all backed up completely because um, over here we're feeding out, we're trying to get rid of this heavy oil and it doesn't have anywhere to go. So previously, we've been turning all of this heavy oil into, um, down here, we've been turning it all into, into thermofluid, but apparently we now have enough thermofluid, so that massive sink on the heavy oil has stopped sinking. Uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. We could put in, and the easiest easiest way to fix this quickly and easily would be to get one of the gargantuan tanks, like like this one, and just bung it on the top of here. Oh, I can't bung it on top of here. <laughs> Eventually, the bots would build it, or at least some of it, and then I can tell them to build that tank there as well. And once that's built, it'll take the pressure off here. The scrap will start to flow again, and things will help. And actually, while I'm talking about the scrap, I'll also mention that Tristan's gone in and done some. Um, Funny business with the unloading of these um, in, in inserters, I think, in order to make sure we fill both sides of the uh, both sides of the belt a bit more evenly. Uh, that's a lot of pulverizers. We could probably replace some of these recycling facilities. We should probably beacon some of these recycling facilities and have a few and have slightly fewer of them, um, and maybe have more belts worth of them. I don't, or, or I don't know. We, we we need we need this this system needs to be sorted out a little bit because I don't think it's really capable of keeping up. But here comes the here comes the bot with the uh, with that that uh, tank that I saw, I mentioned. <laughs> I do miss the Angel Bob's really really fast nuclear bots. They were fantastic. There we go. Now that's there. We can drain this pipe really really quickly. Now the scrap starts to flow in again. We've not actually looking at this. We have even when we've just sort of kicked the system in, into in, into go running full speed ahead once again. We own we still only ha oh no there we go. Now we've got 
I was going to say, well, briefly, we had two full belts flowing in. Um, it's, it does seem to be not quite managed, not really managing to do two full con full belts constantly, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but now, yeah, now it's flow. Maybe that was just waiting for the uh, for the heavy oil to be pumped out. But now we've got the two two belts flowing in like this, so that's that's helped a lot. And we get and that's going to be getting a lot. And there's lots of other stuff on this recycling belt as well. So this should now clear out to an extent, and we can now go back over to the material science, and we will see eventually these will kick back into action again. Where were the ones that were stopped? <laughs> eventually, yeah. So the the scrap is sort of being dealt with. At a bit of a, at a, at a, at a not particularly high rate uh, over here, you can see it barely moving. This is somewhat tragic. Um, so yes, yeah, scrap is clearly going to need a bit of looking at. Put it that way. Uh, Mike did say that um, the, the Mike did say that material science is now only limited by blank data cards and pistol magazines. So one of his more advanced data cards up here somewhere. The, the impact data is it this one? Are you are you an, are you an impact data? Uh, no. Here, this one might have been a ballistic shielding data requires pistol magazines to be fed into it, um, and that's something that he's planning to start building on Norvis and shipping up in trains once we once we get the once we get the space elevators working. So you know that's that's the thing that's going uh, going to going to be fixed and 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 modernised and improved fairly, fairly soon. I don't know whether he thinks he can um, he can productivity module that or whether he's just hoping that uh, that um, it'll be it'll be a bit less logistic a little bit less logistically heavy to bring it all up in trains. <laughs> Next up, Tristan. Yes, yeah, so he has been uh, fiddling with the uh, the science in the science park again because as I as I um, I think I mentioned in the last video, I reckoned that we had an obscene number of um, catalogs stored in here. I'm just going to sort that. Uh, yeah, so you look looking at this, you can see that all the way down to we've got down to. Here is tier one energy catalog, so that's uh, fifteen. It's about seventeen hundred of them. In fact, if I mouse over here, that's seventeen hundred of those, uh, eighteen hundred of the tier twos, and, th and those are excessive numbers. So these have all now been dropped down to one thousand instead of I think it was three thousand there on before. And he's done that for all of all of the um, all the science packs along here. So we're going to be storing much much smaller numbers of the catalogs in here, um, and, and that that's a gr that's a really good thing because. The catalog, the catalogs are really expensive to make in terms of in terms of the data cards. Uh, but the data, when you use the catalogs, the some of the data cards get returned. So whilst if you had a massive stockpile of say green circuits, that means yeah, okay, you've pulled in loads and loads of um, copper and whatever else needs to go goes into green circuits, depending on the mods you're playing, um, in order to make them. So you've you've probably over overuse the mines a little bit but you've got that big supply to work with whereas with these things as you use them up you get some of the data cards back again so it's, it's even more wasteful to have have a, a huge surplus of these sitting in a buffer somewhere so we're going to try and take that down to sensible numbers like only a thousand of each in the, in this end and thousand each in the other end and then of course another 500 of each in the uh, in, in the trains as well so yes there's still going to be a lot of them but it's going to be a lot less horrendous than it was before Let's not think about the number that's in all of these uh, significant data on the on the um, on the belt up here. <laughs> that's the, yeah, let's let's just not think about that. That's a too 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 horrific a thought. He's also done some side balancing on the recycling. Um, to the inputs, no higher up recycling outputs. Um, there's an input there that's been that has been side balanced, but I think I did that ages and ages ago. Um, I'm not sure what he means by that, but apparently he's done some side balancing on the outputs of the recycling. So um, yay. Good. Um, that seems, seems. Oh, maybe it's. Ah, no, I know what he mean. I know what he'll mean. What it'll be, he'll mean. Um, so it'll be places like like this where we've got stuff being fed out onto the onto onto a, a scrap belt. Um, he'll have, he'll have side balanced it, but not not that one because that one isn't struggling too much. But in the various places like maybe this maybe this one has been been side balanced. Things like that, anyway. So the, where where the, where the scrap is being fed onto the onto the onto the scrap belt up here, it's, a, it's it's nice if you side balance it to make sure the belts are completely full of them on the way on their way into the um, into the recycling area. <laughs> Look at that. That's a lot of um, perfectly good data cards coming in here that are going to be fed into the um, fed back in into the system. That's going to be quite nice to see go through. Ha. And I got distracted in for long enough looking at uh, what else we've been doing that we actually do get to see it flowing in now. So the, one of the actually the nice thing about this is that as it goes past the um, the scrap area down here, and also there's a lot of duff data cards in here. So as all these things get pulled out and sent off in a different direction, it allows the belts behind them. It allows the belts to run a bit faster for a, for a moment or two. So 
down here, you can see as these memory cards come through here, this, the scrap is able to flow. The scrap after that is able to flow through a bit more quickly, and we've got a load of contaminated scrap coming through as well. So it makes the belts flow a little bit more nicely for a for a sort of a, a second or two, and um, so it's quite satisfying from that point of view as well. Um, but anyway, we, we, I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not going to watch the rubbish pouring into the uh, in, into the uh, recycling system over here. We are instead going to head off to Snowdrop and have a bit of a look at that planet. Because Tristan has been busy out here, and you remember yesterday I said he was working on uh, getting getting us a cryonite supply. Well, he got a bit distracted by the uh, by, by by train systems and elevators and things like that. So um, he's still got a nuclear plant here. He's got the system for um, defending against uh, coronal mass ejections and um, meteors. Uh, there was only 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 eight guns, not uh, forty one, but never mind. So then down here, he's got in the capsule making system. So as he starts to get the uh, the core fragments coming through, those can be made into capsules and and and, uh, and and stuff can be shipped out with that. And he started to um, sort of spec out and start building up a bit of the um, the cryonite production facility that's going to be running here. So we've got crushing of the cores that are going to be coming in, and he's got and he's designed it around wide area beacons as well. I don't know why he hasn't just speed moduled these all the way up, and presumably these are going to be productivity moduled. Yeah, there we go, four tier three productivity modules. I don't know why he's putting in um, efficiency modules in there. Uh, I'd have thought we'd want to go just full on with the speed, but never mind. And then over here, similar sort of thing. And ah, yes, he's going. He's going advanced furnace and advanced chemical plant. Which is, so advanced furnace five um, five modules, advanced chemical plant four modules. So again, better than well, not better than the industrial furnace from a module point of view, but I think it's faster. Um, and then again, much much better than the uh, than the normal furnace, both the speed and and modules. And this will allow him to make the cryonite a lot more quickly. And then hopefully ship ship that off to the delivery cannons that are presumably going to be in over here. And then probably a spaceship loading, maybe, maybe a space. Then maybe there'll be a space elevator over here. It's either that or we land, keep landing spaceships on planets, and that costs a lot in fuel. So eh, we shall see. It depends. It depends how how uh, expensive we start to feel the space elevator cables are. I suppose. Um, he's even put in one core miner apparently. Oh yes, there we go over there, which needs power. So. The question is, is he, is he going? How much of this is going to come from the core miners? There are plenty of core seams around that he can tap into, but I suspect, based on how the entire rest of the game has gone, he's also going to want to tap into some of these cryonite patches, like this 44 million one here and 27 million, the 18 million. There's lots of nice big cryonite patches around, so he's probably going to want to tap those and get huge tracts of cryonite pouring out of them and in, into the system from those as well, because the the core mining just never seems to quite be enough. We can next glance over. We could glance briefly at Taras to see that Mark has put in another, um, uh, uh, set up one of the guns there to point at, uh, at Norbit, but I don't think there's any, any need to mention that. However, more interestingly, over here on uh, Kotha, we had a shortage of um, iridium at one point. Um, that no longer seems to be the case. We seem to have um, seem to have plenty of it available at the moment. Um, uh, but with, in order to fix the shortage, uh, Mike had been stockpiling it in this station here. Uh, Mark put in a, a um, an extra robot port down here to allow him to then faff around with the belts here and start feeding it from the station back into this warehouse, which is now two thirds full. These warehouses are also about two thirds full, so we've got a decent decent supply of um, iridium available, and we can start carry on shipping that out by by a cannon. Uh, the station here will probably eventually be taking it off to uh, to a spaceship, or more likely to a space elevator with a spaceship at the top of it, so we can ship it in larger quantities. But for now, this system's okay. And by the look of it, that covers everything that's been happening on the exoplanets. Um, the as, as, as you can tell from the way these videos have gone, uh, the, the space elevator occupied most of the stream, both for discussion of how we wanted to do things, playing with ideas, and just, just because we're interested. None of us have actually played with the space elevator yet, because they're still fairly new to the game, and um, I don't think any of us have been sort of sneaking ahead with uh, with 0.6. So, uh, yeah, there's been lo lots of um, exciting stuff going on with that, and it's been, it's been very, very interesting to mess around with. We've done some research this time because, well, of course we have. Uh, if we, if we, if we have take, take, let's take a look at the, the let's take a, take a look through the list. So, we researched advanced chemical plants. I've talked about those lots. They're, they're faster. You can put more modules in them. Advanced assembling machines, faster, much faster. Uh, complicated to make, but you know, still faster. Uh, vitalic reagent. What on earth is a vitalic reagent? It's going to be green. Is that this thing? It it is a, a multi-purpose reagent for a wide range of chemical reactions. Good. Um, it allows you to make it. I'm sure this is going to be very, very useful for um, future biological science stuff. But other than that, it doesn't seem to really. It's not. It's not an end goal. It's an intermediary. So that's nice. Med pack threes. Apparently, that's uh, that's life support equipment three. We've made med pack threes. That's presumably a med pack that meds you up harder than the previous med pack. There it is. Um, it heals. Does it tell me how much it heals? Two hundred. Apparently. Um, Good. So, but it requires biomass and chemical gel to make. So it's and and med pack twos. So it's going to be awkward to make, but 
you could, or you could just eat lots and lots of raw fish. That seems to be a more traditional way of healing yourself up. We've researched space platform plating, which is um, nice. I mean, sure, it's it's basically space scaffolding, but it looks slightly prettier, and you can move around on it, and, and you can walk faster on it. Now, I don't know anyone who walks in this game anymore. We, we've we've had jetpacks for so long now that basically you just always fly everywhere. But it does look prettier, so maybe somebody's going to try start start to use it. Um, it does cost quite a lot of iridium and, st and even more steel, so I'm going to discourage its use, um, except perhaps for sort of occasional, very small areas, but. Yeah, um, it doesn't seem worth the cost to me. But I guess later on, when we've got massive, massive quantities of both, you know, we, we, we could sort of, I don't know, we could put a nice little decorative board around, the, around all the platforms or something like that. <laughs> got tool belt six. That's, that, that's nice. And these are things, so the biological sciences tend to, uh, oh, oh, no, wait, I take it back. This is a material science thing. Um, I was going to say the biological sciences allow you to get lots of nice upgrades, but this is a material one. So that just extends your, your character's inventory by an extra five slots, which is very nice. Having, having a bit more space in your inventory is great when you're accidentally filling it up with junk because you've picked up a belt. Uh, <clears throat> yes. We've got inserter capacity seven, so that means we can now uh, load even more. E each time an inserter swings, it can carry even more stuff in it in its hands. That's a material science two, so that's, that's why we got to that one. Um, it upgrades both normal and non-stack inserters and stack inserters, so we've got extra, extra, extra bonuses in there. Logistics five. What's that? Ah, uh, okay. We've got logistics five, which is uh, purple belts, so um, even, even faster belts. These are now. Um, 90 items per second, which is so that's twice as fast as a blue belt and twice as fast as the white space belts. We have researched the Spidertron, the big, the, the uh, big stompy robot of construction and combat doom. Um, good. I didn't really, I've never really used the Spidertron very much. I mean, I, I know that they have all kinds of uses, but uh, and yeah, not really used them much. We've got superior inserters, which are basically presumably stack inserters. And, and oh, ah, I see. So they're um. Yeah, you can get a, you can get a faster long inserter. That could be very useful. So let's have a look at the inserter speeds. So we've got um, this one, the the burner inserter, which is the worst of the worst, is 216 uh, uh, degrees per second. So it takes a second and a half to go all the way around, <laughs> um, and it can hold three things. Uh, this one is 300, 300 degrees per second, so it's 50% faster. Again, same same amount of stuff. This one is 432, so it's 50%. Interesting, 50%. The long inserter is 50% faster than the regular inserter. Um, but by the time you're making long inserters, you're probably also making the fast inserters, which are 800 degrees per second, so about twice as fast as the uh, long ones. Then you get the stack inserters, which are also 864, but they can carry 12 things at a time, rather than the three that a fast inserter can carry. Then we get the superior inserter that rotates at 12, 1300 degrees per second, so about fifty percent faster than the than the uh, the fast and the stack, um, and also can carry twelve. So it's a stack inserter that is fifty percent faster. Then the long superior long inserter is also just as fast. So it, it that's twelve hundred degrees per second versus. 400, so three times as fast as a regular um, long inserter, and it carries as much as a stack inserter. So that is going to be really, really powerful, just for the sheer speed of it. And we've got filter insert, superior filter inserter. Oh, and a long filter inserter as well. That could be quite nice. So these are essentially another tier of inserter. So you, you go from the black to the yellow to the blue to the green, and then you can go to the also black, but in a but darker black, <laughs> um, to get just to continue the, the general upgrades all the way through. But this upgrade gets you all of that speed for the long inserters and gets you filters for the long inserters as well. So it's very, very valuable because of that. So that's that's really quite nice. We've also got lab research speed uh, six. So, you know, lab runs a bit faster, great. Weapons delivery cannon, which is a delivery cannon that's designed to send weapons over. So we've got um, iridium pile driver um, ca capsules that we can fire off with that. So this allows us to basically lob um, uh, lob, fire weapons at the biters on other planets, which is going to make it very, very hard for them to retaliate, which is quite nice. And then, pretty much lastly, we've got the, uh, we're currently researching uh, mining productivity, mining productivity six. So, this means that each time, you're, each time your mining drills run, they produce slightly more output, but without taking up any more of input. So, it's the same as putting productivity modules in them, essentially. Uh, we've then got some weird, we've got some uh, unit capsules uh, in the queue to be researched, probably just because they're there in the research, a bit. things we can research, and I don't know if anyone actually wants these, because I don't think sending, I don't think using small biters and small spitters would be remotely useful against any sort of enemies we're coming up against. Uh, life support equipment too makes your, oh, makes the life support more more efficient, that's quite nice. Um, so it, it means you won't get through as many uh, life support capsules. And also compact beacons. Now. 
compact beacons are interesting uh, because you get a 75% transmission efficiency instead of instead of 50%. I'll talk about these a bit more when we get them and start using them though. I think this this video is quite long enough as it is um, and the, and this is more interesting to talk about these things when we've actually got them available. Uh, we didn't have any deaths in the last episode because we were off in generally peaceful areas and not getting not getting uh, attacked by biters. Um, space is much much safer than you might expect and Tristan's out on Snowdrop which is a peaceful planet. So yeah, pretty safe, no deaths. So, and so that brings us to the end of the episode. As ever, thank you very much for watching. Please check out the channel sponsor, that's trefoil.be. Use the code LawrencePlays to get 20% off uh, your first month. And please come back in the future for all the future content on this channel. There will be a there will be no streams next week because I shall be on holiday. But the week after, that we'll be back on back to normal. So there will be a Factorio space exploration stream on the Monday, where we'll be carrying on with all of this good stuff. Then there will be a uh, and, and there'll be an XCOM stream, XCOM two stream starting on the uh, on on the Wednesday. Uh, we'll also have the videos on fr Friday and Saturday as per usual. There will hope there should be a video on tu on the coming Tuesday, even though I'm away. Um, but that requires me to have got it made, so I'll, um, I'll I'll keep working on that, and you'll see if you'll see if it comes out. But I think it probably will do. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed everything that's been going on on the uh, on the cha on the uh, channel in the last over the last week or two. Um, and you'll be back in the future. If you're not subscribed, please make sure you are. And I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching.